Hello, everybody. I uh, just want to welcome you to the Sunday School lesson for Sunday, March 6th of 2022. Don't know about how things are where you're at, but here in Falmouth this morning, I'm doing this on Saturday morning. It's a beautiful day out. It's supposed to get up into the 70s, so I'm going to get this done, and then I'm going to head outside at some point. But just want to welcome you to the Sunday School lesson. Uh, for those of you that are new, teach Sunday school at Falmouth Baptist Church in Falmouth, Kentucky. And uh, certainly we invite you to attend with us uh, live uh, Sunday school at 945 and worship at 1045. Uh, but for those of you that uh, uh, just join us here, we're certainly happy to have you and uh, hope that uh, you'll follow along in the reading. Uh, today we're going to be reading out of uh, John chapter 13, verses 3 through 10 and 14 through 16. And we're starting a a new series we finished up with Joseph last week, and now we're going to be looking at a, a new six-week series, uh, Living Life Com Connected to Christ is the series, and the the, the first one is a, a, a life of humble service. So as always, I like to start off with a word of prayer, so if you would just bow with me, and uh, we'll have a word of prayer, then we'll get started. And dear Lord, we just thank you for allowing us to come together this morning, and Father, just thank you for the many blessings that you've given us. Uh, Lord, I do want to lift up those in prayer that have lost loved ones, those who are going through difficult times. Uh, and Lord, just uh, we pray that you'd be with them, and pray that they would turn to you for peace and comfort. Father, during this time, I just pray that your Holy Spirit would, would lead me and that your Spirit would speak to each of us uh, as we listen to your word and, and that we would, might grow closer to you. Father, we especially lift up those that are lost, Lord. Just uh, pray that your spirit will continue to call them and that they will respond and accept the salvation that you freely give. Father, we just thank you for loving us. We thank you for the blessings that you've given us. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, yeah, again, as I, as I said, the title of the lesson is A Life of Humble Service. And the point of the lesson is, we reflect Christ when we serve others with humility. Um, so it, as you can gather, the lesson is going to be on humility. Um, the opening question uh, in my materials is, what characteristics do you think of when it comes to a hero? Uh, you know, the last couple of years, there's been a lot of talk about heroes. Uh, you know, heroes in healthcare and heroes doing this and heroes doing that as we have gone through COVID. And, um you know, but typically when we think of heroes, you know, if you think of the books and the movies and TV, it's usually somebody that's really strong, you know, strong, powerful people, you know, fighting for truth, justice in the American way, you know, and, and all that good stuff uh, that, you know, that vanquish the foes and vanquish evil and, and you know, in their strength. And, um, you know, sadly, that's not the way it often works in the real world, you know. Those with power, those strong, powerful individuals, you know, often abuse us, abuse it. And, uh, you know, the strong often oppose the weak instead of building them up. And I, I, it's just amazing the timeliness of these lessons. You can see God at work in, in the timing of them. Uh, when you look at this particular lesson with what's going on in Ukraine with, with Russia, if you look at the history of the Ukrainian people, they have been a oppressed for years and years by by Russia uh, or the Soviet Union um, they're basically a you know viewed as a servant state of Russia if you look at the history and you know we see this massive uh, world power taking on and oppressing attempting to oppress a, a much smaller neighbor um, and, and, you know sadly that's the way things happen in this world um, but when we look at Jesus, you know, Jesus walked on the earth and, and, you know, he had the power of God himself. You know, he had power unlike anything the world had ever seen or has ever seen since. If you think of the power that Jesus held, but Jesus did not use that power to crush, to kill or to overwhelm. Uh, instead, he used it to serve others. In this lesson, the, lesson, the setting uh, is the Last Supper. Uh, most of you know what the Last Supper is. You know, it's the final days leading up to the night before Jesus' arrest and the, those final days leading to his crucifixion. crucifixion. And they're gathered in a borrowed upper room to, to have a meal. Um, and, 
you know, they're, they're still, even though all this is going on and Jesus has been walking with his disciples now for a few years, there's still a certain amount of rivalry amongst the, the disciples. And, and, you know, Jesus uses this setting to, to finally teach them about humility and humble service. So we're going to read the verses again. If you're following along, we're reading out of John chapter 13, verses 3 through 10, and then skipping over to 14 through 16. So starting out, it says, Jesus knew that the Father had given everything into his hands, that he had come from God, and that he was going back to God. So he got up from supper, laid aside his outer clothing, took a towel, and tied it around himself. Next, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet and to dry them with the towel tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who asked him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus answered him, What I'm doing you don't realize now, but afterward you will understand. You will never wash my feet, Peter said. And Jesus replied, If I don't wash you, you have no part with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. One who has bathed, Jesus told him, doesn't need to wash every, anything except his feet, but he is completely clean. You are clean but not all of you. John 13 and 14 through 16. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do just as I have done for you. Truly I tell you, a servant is not greater than his master and a messenger is not greater than the one who sent him. So as I said, we start off with Jesus needing to teach the disciples an act of humility. It's kind of interesting in this writing. John uh, is the only gospel writer that really includes some insight into Jesus's mood and motivation as he's getting ready to act. Uh, you know, John gives us that insight, and here he he starts out telling us some things about Jesus that that's going through Jesus's mind as Jesus is getting ready to teach. You know, first of all, he says Jesus knew, he knew one that God had given everything into his hands. You know, Jesus knew the power that he had and that he was, you know, about to, to receive it as he ascended into heaven. You know, he knew that he came from God and he knew he was about to return to God. So Jesus knows what's going on. You know, he, he knows that his time is short and he knows of his divine nature and that he has to teach, you know, he knew what was happening and what was about to come. So then verse four, it says, you know, you know, well, they're, they're sitting around a table. This is at the last supper. I've got a picture of last supper hanging on the wall behind me. Well, it's not behind me. It's off to my side today. Sometimes it's behind me in these lessons, but you know, and, and the classic picture is that long table with all the disciples seating, facing the camera, facing the painter and sharing a meal. Well, you know, it actually, in actuality, and this is true not only of, of that culture, but a lot of culture, it, for this meal, they would sit around a U-shaped table. And I say sit, that's really not accurate. They would lay. There would be couches that were long enough for them to lie on a recline. And they would rest, you know, their, their heads on their, on their, you know, on their hands and their elbows on the table. You know, bad manners today to have your elbow on the table. But, but you know, you, you think and you see the, old, the pictures of the Romans laying around being fed grapes and stuff. You know they would recline as they as they dined, um, and you know earlier in the evening, you know th there's been an ongoing discussion amongst the disciples, you know, about which would be first uh, and which would be second, you know, in, in authority in the kingdom. You know, I'll sit at the right hand. I'll sit, you know, just this sort of ongoing thing. And Jesus says, you know, it's happened a lot in the past, and Jesus has addressed it, but it keeps on going. So finally, when we get to this point, Jesus, is, he's kind of had enough, if, if you will, and he takes some direct action. He's going to teach them humility. And when you look, you know, he takes very decisive action. I said, they're all sort of just lounging around the table, enjoying a meal. And Jesus gets up, you know, he stands up, says he takes off his outer clothing and that would be like a shawl or you know, the woolen coat that they would sometimes, you know, use as their bedroll when they were out in the in the wilderness, maybe sleeping. But, you know, he takes off this outer cloak that he's wearing and then he ties a, a towel around himself. 
and he pours water over the towel and begins to wash feet. There's a lot of significance to this uh, in, in the foot washing because typically what would happen at a, at a dinner of this uh, nature is the guest would arrive, there would be the host would assign a servant to wash feet. Well, apparently that courtesy had been overlooked at this meal, but but it, it would typically a servant would be assigned to wash the feet of those who are coming into the meal, and typically it would be the lowliest servant, the lowest guy on the totem pole would have to wash people's feet. And um, I don't know if you ever washed anybody's feet, but you know some people's feet can be pretty disgusting. Uh, but, you know, it, it was always the lowest guy down on the totem pole that would assign, be assigned that. The master of the household would never wash someone's feet. And a rabbi would never wash someone's feet. The teacher, you know, Jesus, the rabbi, you often refer to as rabbi or teacher. That person would never be the one to wash the feet of the guest. Instead, it would be the lowliest servant in the house. And, you know, as this is happening... You know, it, we don't know what order Jesus went in, but apparently, you know, some of the others just, you know, they, they didn't do anything. You look at verse six and seven there. Um, you know, they, they either just let Jesus wash his feet. They, you know, maybe they were shocked that he was doing just didn't know what to say. Uh, you know, and didn't understand the significance. Um, you know, so they might've been stunned uh, or, or they just let Jesus do it, you know, without understanding that significance. But Peter, always the brash one, Peter says, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? You know, and he says, are you going to do this, master, rabbi? You know, sort of this, this brashness about him. And, and Jesus says, you know, what I'm about to do right now, you don't understand, but you will understand later. Um, and Peter sort of takes, you know, in doing this has sort of a, you know, a sense of, you know, gives us a, a false humility, impression of false humility that he's humble, like, Lord, you're going to wash my feet? Uh, you know, where Jesus is showing true humility, Peter's like, you're going to wash my feet? My feet, Lord? How, how can you do that? Um, and, and, you know, verses nine, he, he just says, you'll never wash my feet. You know, I can't allow you, the teacher, to do this. And as I said, Jesus says, if you don't let me, you will never be a part of me. You know, his response is that you will never be a part of me if you don't let me do this. You know, Jesus with Jesus, it's kind of, it is an all or nothing situation. You either let him control your life, either let him lead it, or you don't. You know, it, it's that simple. You don't pick and choose. And that's, you know, Jesus says, if, if you don't let me do this, you will never be part of this. So, you know, we have to let him cleanse us, you know, uh, and we have to humbly accept that cleansing that he gives us. It's how we show our allegiance to Jesus Christ. Um, so Peter continuing on, ever the enthusiastic one, you know, Peter jumps up and says, well, Lord, not my feet, but my head and my hands too. You know, if you're going to wash them, you know, I, I'm all in, I, you know, he, he's, you know, so excited. He's like, well, if, if that's how I show that I follow you, then don't just do my feet. You know what? Wash, wash my head, wash my hands. Um, you know, he wants to be all in as a follower of Christ. That's through his excitement, through his abundance of, you know, the way he just jumps into things if you follow Peter. Uh, but, you know, Jesus says, no, you know, you know, typically people would bathe before they come to the dinner and be clean. But, you know, the journey there, their feet would get dirty. And, you know, so, you know, it's really, no, just your feet. You know, you're, you're clean, just your feet are what need to be cleaned at this point. And, and, you know, there's sort of some sim symbolism in that. If you look at our lives, uh, if you're a Christian, you know, when you come to Christ, you're saved, you're clean, your body is cleansed of sin, but you still go through the daily grind, the daily muck of our lives. And we still need that time of, of cleansing, that time of forgiveness of where we failed. You know, we need to have our feet washed from time to time, if you will. And, and, and you know, so Jesus says, you're, you're clean you know, nothing needs to be washed except your feet. And then he says, you are clean, but not all of you. When I first read that, I thought he meant like his body, but he's just said, no, your body's clean. So really, if you look at some of our translations, it's like not everyone here in this room is clean. You know, it, it's, uh, it, he's talking about Ju Judas. He says, you know, you're clean, 
but not everyone in this room is clean, Peter. Um, and then just sort of to, to drive his point home, you know, Jesus says, so and there in verse 14, he says, if I can do this, you should do the same. He says, so if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. Now, some groups take that as a literal reading that you need to wash feet. You know, most of us take this as a um, an illustration by Jesus, that, you know, that as I have served, you know, the, the one with the authority also became the one with the towel. You know, he didn't order us to do something just because he said so, you know, He's calling us to be like him. He says, you know, if, if I can serve, if I can serve, so should you. So should you serve others with humility and humbleness. Um, in, in verse 15, he says, I have given you an example. And that's why I think this is more an illustration as opposed to, to a command to wash feet. Um, he says, you know, I've given you an example. Um, he says, you know, this, his instruction here is pretty clear to us. You know, when he says, I, th listen up, this is my example. He says, do as I have done for you. You know, we are to serve others humbly just as he did. We are to serve other people with humility and, you know, letting down our pride. You know, and, and if you look at Jesus, ultimately he went on to perform the greatest uh, act of service ever known to mankind. You know, he sacrificed himself for your sins and for my sins. And then in verse 16, to show just the importance of this, in this translation that the material use says, truly, I tell you, I think the King James says, verily, verily. Some of these, you know, there's a number of different translations of this phrase, but they all point to this is important. What I'm saying to you is important. It's sort of like, listen up. You know, this is the truth. This is what you need to know. And he says, a servant is not greater than the master. You know, that, that sounds just on its face pretty logical. But if we look at the setting, um, there were a number of different kinds of servants and or slaves even, that, you know, in that time. And, and they had various roles and various times they might have to serve. And some would be able to obtain freedom at some point. But here, the servant, the slave that Jesus is kind of talking about is something that was known as a bond slave. And a bond slave was a, a slave that was to work for a certain period of time and then would obtain usually seven years and then would obtain their freedom. But a bond slave loved the master so much that even upon being freed, the bond slave chose to stay and serve the master. And isn't that a great illustration of what we should be? You know, we have been freed of our sins. We've been freed of our past. Now do we choose to stay and serve the master that freed us from that? Um, you know, and, and that's what, you know, Jesus is saying. You know, that he says, you know, I tell you, this is important. A servant is not greater than the master. And says, you know, the master sets the example. If the master serves, so should we. You know, Jesus saying, if I serve, if I can serve and serve with humility and serve other people, serve mankind, then so should you. If you're a Christian, you should serve others. You know, and he says the messenger. And there he's kind of talking. He's talking about the, the disciples. He's talking about us. He says, you know, the messenger is not greater than one who sends him. You know, to the literal part at that time to the disciples, you know, is you're not greater than me. I'm the one sending you out in the world to show this service to others. But he's also talking to us. You know, we are sent, we are called as Christians to, to share the gospel, to share the word with others. We are called as Christians to serve others, to serve with humility and humbleness. As I was reading this lesson, you know, I, it's sort of like, you know, this is something we're supposed to do. Uh, but I started off with, you know, sadly, that's often not the case. Uh, there's one of the plays of Shakespeare talks about something being observed or honored more in the, yeah, honored more in the breach than the observance. Sort of something you're supposed to do and you honor it more by breaking the command than by actually following it. You know, Jesus says, the messenger's not greater than the one who sends him. 
you know, and he says clearly, if I can do this, if I can do this, then you should do so as well. So, you know, as we reflect on that, you know, we need to, to serve others with humility. That is one way, if you're a Christian, to reflect, you know, Christ in your life by being willing to serve others. Um, so what's a hero? Someone that serves others, someone who's selfless that serves others, not somebody that wields power just because they can and just because they have it. So I'm going to wrap up there again. I uh, always invite you to join us uh, in person at Falmouth Baptist Church in Falmouth, Kentucky, Sunday school at 945, uh, service at 1045 if you can attend. Uh, Brother Cohen on our Facebook page will deliver the message at 1045. And certainly invite you to join in uh, virtually if that's uh, what, you, what you need to do. But obviously, we in-person attendance is so important. We would, would love to have you join us if you're not in the area or choose to go to a different church. You know, uh, Go somewhere and serve. That's, that's the message this week. Go somewhere and serve. So with that, uh, Lord willing, I'll be back next week and we'll continue on uh, with our new series, Living a Life Connected with Christ.